Today we're going to be speaking to Dr. Anne Kennard. She's board certified in OBGYN and fellowship trained in integrative medicine. Her undergraduate and graduate training is in nutrition science, and she's a registered yoga instructor and herbalist. She works as an academic OB hospitalist and directs integrative medicine and resident wellness programs for an academic center. She speaks nationally on women's integrative wellness topics, including nutrition, culinary medicine, botanical medicine, and mind-body approaches. She's also the author of the Amazon bestseller, Nourish, an integrative medicine cookbook. Dr. Kennard also leads an online forum dedicated to the development of resident wellness resources and offers free wellness resources through Mindful Health Care Collective for all healthcare workers. She enjoys the beach, gardening, and time with her family. So in today's episode, we're going to be listening to Dr. Ann Kennard's story, as well as some tips on anti-inflammatory foods. So I guess it started really before I was in medicine. I got a bachelor's degree and master's work in nutrition science, um, which at least at the time was unusual for a physician to be a nutritionist first. And then I went to medical school, loved women's health, went into OBGYN, completed an OBGYN residency. And during my residency, experienced some burnout and really found some help with yoga. And I ended up during my residency also training as a registered yoga instructor. And right around the end of my residency, I read a book by Tarone Lodog, who at the time was the director of the University of Arizona Integrative Medicine Fellowship. And it tied in all of these interests that I had really of answering the question, what makes a person well, rather than naming problems and trying to fix them. And it was the first time that I'd really seen um, nutrition and mind-body medicine woven into a conventional medical practice. And so I knew that I needed that training too. And so after my residency, I started working as an OBGYN and concurrently also um, completed a two-year fellowship in integrative medicine through the University of Arizona. And then through that, I got more interested in botanical medicine and herbalism and subsequently followed up with herbalist um, training. And so kind of a lifelong learner. And I practiced as um, kind of a regular obstetrician gynecologist, some integrative medicine woven into the visits, of course, because that's who I am. And it was a typical OBGYN job. You know, I was taking cute every second or third night um, call, office, surgery. Um, I had a, a new baby also at the time. And eventually the body said, my body said no. And I was um, sick, I had joint pain, and was ultimately diagnosed with autoimmune disease. And that was really a time in my life that I had a pivot point. Like I had always wanted to do something with academic medicine, with teaching, with integrative medicine, more as a primary focus. But I thought, I don't know why I thought I had to defer that dream and be, you know, a real OBGYN for a length of time first. Yeah. And then this diagnosis kind of redirected my priorities to prioritize myself, my health, and my interests now rather than later. I think that, you know, listening to this, when I trained, we were just talking before we came on, it wasn't accepted. Wellness wasn't accepted. It was provide medicine, and that was basically the philosophy or how we approach things. Where now it seems to be more of a push for food is medicine and preventative mm-hmm. work. So you jump on board, you know, ahead of the game, which is great. I actually didn't know about the rheumatoid arthritis. I thought that that came first and then that you had an interest in integrative medicine. I didn't know the integrative medicine came first. Interesting. Yeah, that was kind of organic to who I was and my prior um, life and nutrition. Just at the time, at least, that I was doing the training in that, like you said, people didn't really talk about nutrition in medicine. And it always seems so bizarre to me that 
approximately 10% or so of cancers are hereditary. And there's brochures and pamphlets and testing and, you know, and but there's not a pamphlet next to it that says, you know, 70% can be attributed to some sort of extrinsic factor, including lifestyle choices. And, you know, I think that doctors need more training on helping patients with nutrition and lifestyle choices, which is one of the reasons that I'm in academic medicine, changing that for the next generation. So I also know that you are working with residents as far as a residency program. You may or may not know that, depending on who's listening to this, there's a higher rate of physician burnout nowadays, and there's a higher rate of physician suicide. So because of that, there's been initiatives as far as wellness during medical school, residency, all the way through, you know, being an attending. So I know you're doing some work in that, and can you tell us, Dr. Ann, can you tell us a little about that? <laughs> you're right. When, when I was training, and, you know, you're a pioneer woman in the field, and it just, not only was wellness not talked about, it sort of had this feeling that if you had time to be well, you weren't working hard enough, and that, you know, the, the goal was, um, patient care, and if that was at the expense of the physician, then that was the price to be paid. And now that we've got um, data over the last well, maybe six years or so showing this much higher rate for suicide for physicians, um, rate approaching you know 50% burnout, um, mental illness, in residency, anxiety, depression. And with the kind of push that this actually is a patient care and a patient safety issue, and that individual physician wellness is a core competency for being um, a professional physician, you know, that, that our wellness directly influences patient outcome. Yeah. So I think that that's starting to, to shift. And so what, what I'm doing with that right now, um, from a residency perspective, is implementing a longitudinal residency wellness curriculum um, with different modalities, including mindfulness and medicine, um, physician coaching, uh, shame, resilience, grief and loss, and then some personal wellness things like nutrition and exercise, and looking too on how to influence more institutional changes, because um, both of them need to be addressed to improve physician wellness. One of the, so that's for my individual institution, but also bringing a community together of attending um, medical educators that are interested in this through a Facebook group to where we have you know, a place to have support, collaboration. My goal is to ultimately develop something collaboratively for a multi-center trial because most of the data focuses on attending physicians and not resident physicians. And also offering um, some classes through the Mindful Healthcare Collective as a member of their board, which was started as a response to the COVID pandemic to try to offer resources to physicians during this particularly difficult time. Your job demands that you take care of people, you want to help people, and yet you know that you're putting yourself in danger. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah, this has been an extraordinary time. I think that for, you know, we already had issue, um, a big issue with physician suicide and burnout and disillusionment, people leaving medicine, and the COVID pandemic will only amplify those issues. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. I also wanted to touch upon your cookbook. You have a cookbook called Nourish. Thank you. I so, do. Yeah. How did this come about? And, well, you know, I have to give a shout out to you for the physician, female physician entrepreneurs, um, for encouraging this you know, just kind of this like bravery, you know, to say like, you, you can do this. If you want to do it, you can do it and you should do it. And rather than thinking all of the imposter thoughts that are so common for, for women physicians and through it too, I met my um, publishers, shout out to Nicole Swiner, who owns Swiner Publishing Company. And with um, both of your help and encouragement. I published an Amazon bestseller 
called Nourish, an Integrative Medicine Cookbook. And this has um, simple food as medicine recipes that can be prepared by somebody without a culinary background and um, good for busy families. It has an element for herbal medicine recipes, simple things, you know, elderberry syrup, um, bedtime teas, skin salves, that kind of thing. Um, and then an element too for mind-body medicine sort of recipes per se, um, how to apply uh, breath work and mindfulness principles in a very um, accessible way that can be read and practiced in the moment. I really enjoyed the book. I love that, like everything that you, you did in the book, but even talking about the different types of mushrooms, to me, I just picked up mushrooms. And then I was like, no, Anne said, you know, it's this type of <laughs> Remember, I was like in the store and I'm like, went to grab it and went, you know, changed it because of the book. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of, I, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. It was, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the book, it's Cold Nourish by Dr. Anne Kennard. I'll make sure I put it in the show notes down below. Looking back on everything, for people that are just starting their journey outside of doing things, you know, they're in the traditional doctor, or perhaps they have another job that, you know, they're maybe not a hundred percent fulfilled with and they want to do some other mm -hmm. things. Any advice for them? Like what would you do differently if you were to repeat this path? Mm -hmm. I'd first like to say that there's a lot of things that I would do the same just because I was sort of willing to follow this non-traditional interests, you know, cause at the time there was, you know, people that thought, well, why are you spending time getting a yoga certification? And, you know, why do you want to commit this time to the fellowship? And, you know, all the pieces didn't necessarily make sense at the time um, for me being an OBGYN. And, you know, there was some criticism along the way. And I just had to think within myself, like, no, I want to do this. I'm interested in this. I'm a lifelong learner. And I don't need to understand exactly how it's all going to fit right now. <laughs> and, and then it ultimately all coalesced, you know, into opportunities and interests that were helpful to academic medicine and kind of to developing my own interests. Um, I think in terms of what I would do differently is I felt as a new physician, like there were so many shoulds, like I should work full time or I should take all of this call or I sort of owed the profession that after being trained to do so, um, even at the expense of, you know, what was really good for me. And I think that if I could do it over again, I would hold firm boundaries to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't really owe you an explanation why this is what I would like to offer. When you say OBGYN and that integrative medicine, I think women themselves, obviously I'm a little biased, right? But I feel, I, I still feel to this day, most of them are the caretakers are responsible for the, the children and work if they're working. Mm -hmm. and I feel like you can't work from an empty cup. You know, you have to take care of yourself first. So you as an integrative medicine and doing OBGYN, where primarily all your patients are female, women, um, it makes total sense to me, you know? And as far as somebody always saying something, they always do say something, no matter what you do. Whether you do it or not. They yeah, don't. a hater's going to hate. <laughs> so that, that really is, that was a huge thing for me too, as far as stepping outside of my clinical role. You know, a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Topic. Yeah. That's right. And no apology necessary. You know, like you get to choose what you want to do or what you what you think is good for your life. And I listened a little bit too late. And, you know, I, I wish I didn't have, you know, an inflammatory arthritis. But at the same time, like, that allowed me, it was a gift to allow me to make choices that prioritized myself and my health and my interests now and not after 20 years of practice that was harmful. Going forward the next few years, what do you, what, what do you want for yourself? What do you see? Mm -hmm. I want to develop kind of formal curriculum in resident wellness and work on publishing this and making it scalable and generalizable to different residency programs, different specialties and improving um, interest and acceptance in, in this concept. I am looking forward once COVID is over, 
hopefully, <laughs> to uh, resuming speaking. I really love speaking on women's integrative medicine and I lecture for different organizations nationwide and very excited about that resuming when possible. You're even doing some classes, I know, right, at the local level. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Um, so I speak on women's integrative medicine, nutrition, culinary medicine, herbal medicine, and um, mind-body approaches for more generalized topics, stress, sleep, etc. And one of my favorite things um, that I've actually been doing during the pandemic even is online um, culinary medicine classes. And so uh, we've called it the hashtag pandemic pantry, which is how to make medicinal foods with what you got. And so the last one I did was focusing on how to kind of the basics of making a soup, unrecipe, no recipe, but the, the basics of how to do that with um, limited or, um, you know, different ingredients than someone might be used to. And I think the next one I'm going to do is uh, roasting vegetables. Basically, if you can one ro roast one vegetable, you can roast them all and um, helping that feel more approachable for people. All right. As far as anti-inflammatories, give me three foods that you would recommend, your three favorite foods for yeah. an adaptogen. <laughs> Whatever your three top are, what do you think? All right. Yeah. So the first one would be dark leafy greens, whatever that your preference is. You know, I personally really love rainbow chard. You know, you get those beautiful phytonutrients from the different colors in the stalks and then the dark leafies on that. Anything in that um, like black purple family, blueberries, blackberries, purple radish, anything with those anthocyanins are going to be just a potent medicine. And, you know, I'd be remiss, I think, to not include the warming spices like turmeric and ginger in there. You get uh, a fresh root and grate it, put it in food or in tea, um, in golden milk. And it is so flavorful. It is so medicinal. And, you know, this is sort of ancient wisdom made new because now you can buy a golden latte in a coffee shop, but this is something Ayurvedic medicine has known for, you know, 5,000 years. So we're circling back, I think. Um, in terms of an adaptogen, I think, so my favorite adaptogen for COVID and kind of in general for women in transitions, including the transition of menopause is um, ashwagandha regulating the cortisol um, stress response, particularly in the evening. Good for people that feel kind of uh, tired and wired. They can't fall asleep. Their mind is racing. Um, they just need to be able to downregulate a little. 